Hello again and welcome to the 140k and Bill Guard Tactics video. Now before we get into today's video, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Jezman for sending in some awesome pictures of his Morgan Iron Guard. I love these classic metal models, they look so good. I've got dozens of the little buggers myself and it's so good to see other people with classic metal Morgan armies. Jez, you have warmed my heart. These models look absolutely fantastic. I love the unique colour scheme you've got going on. I love the basing you've managed to achieve. It all looks fantastic. Fantastic. So thank you, Jez, for sending in these really cool pictures. Now, if anyone else has got any cool pictures you want to use in my videos, please post them on my Facebook page or you can email them to me at mordiangloryTV at gmail.com. Now, don't worry if you're an ogre who's not had his bonehead surgery yet. There'll be email addresses, there'll be Facebook links down in the description below. But without further ado, let's crack on with today's video. So recently I've noticed a trend with the 40k games that I've been playing. I've had no issue with smashing my opponents in terms of firepower. In fact, most of the games that I play, I'm able to pick up 80% of my opponent's army over the course of five turns, no problem whatsoever. And hell, I barely lose 50% of my army in return. And I've been having no problem with winning the firefight. In fact, I haven't come across another faction, including Tau, that have been able to outshoot me as guard recently. However, what I've noticed is I've been losing my games on points. And there was one instance recently where I destroyed 95% of my opponent's army. It was a Harlequin player at the last tournament, and the same thing happened at the tournament before that. I destroyed 95% of his army, and yet he still beat me on points. Now, obviously, well done to that opponent for winning the game. Dylan, absolute top player, no issue with him beating me. This is not a salty video in any way, shape, or form. But what it made me realise is that Guard have no issue with killing stuff. But what we as a community need to do is start stop focusing on firepower and start focusing on point scoring, okay? And so what I want to do today, guys, is do a quick tip tactic on how can we as guard go into our games, build our lists, and just be ready to score 90 plus points every single game, no problem. In fact, in some cases, 95 points or better in every single game that we play. How can we achieve that factor? And so that's what I'm going to be looking at today. Now the first thing I want to mention is what kind of army do I think can achieve this? What kind of Imperial Guard army can take 90% plus casualties yet still win on points? And to be, for me guys, it's an obvious one. It's the Infantry Guard, okay? I've been playing a lot of games with Armored Guard. I've been playing a lot of games with Met Guard. You guys know I have been making a damn big effort to expand my horizons. I know I'm known as the Pure Infantry Guard guy, right? But I've been trying out these other armies and I have to admit, that feeling of power you get when you just blast your opponent's the table feels great, but it's kind of gets soured when you get to the end of the game and you've still lost because of points. I think that Pure Infantry Guard, they obviously just work the opposite way, okay? They don't have the damage output that Met Guard, that Armor Guard has, but what they do have is the ability to throw waves after waves of uh, bodies at the enemy and be able to score points throughout the game and they do not care how many casualties they take, they can still score big points and that's what I want to be doing with my army. That's the goal of today's video. How can we build an army that can score 90 plus points and take 90% plus casualties? Pure infantry guard is the way to go. So that's what I want to start with. I think we need to be going down the pure infantry route. I'm thinking 200 plus bodies at least. I think you need to be closing in on 300 bodies. And we're not even talking conscripts anymore, guys. I think you need to be closing in on 300 bodies, no questions asked, in order to be able to get these big points, okay? So that's where we're looking at. Pure infantry guard, 250-ish bodies, that's the kind of list that you need to be thinking about if you want to be scoring points, if you want to be winning games but not killing enemies. That's how you want to do it, okay? So pure infantry is this going to be the focus of this video. Now, what about primary? What about secondary? Let's get straight into the actual points themselves now that we've had a brief talk about what style of army do we think is going to be winning these games. Okay, so for me, primary is fairly self-explanatory, right guys? You're just going to throw waves and waves of teenage soldiers at the objectives and be doing your best to be making sure that you're getting at least 8 or 12 primary points every single turn. Now the way you can do that is you just need to be holding all of the objectives all of the time. That might sound crazy, you might be like, but Morning Glory, if I go into the middle of the board too early, I'm going to die. But we've already established that we're willing to lose 99% of our army in order to achieve victory. So if you're able to score 8 to 12 points every single turn, then you're very easily going to get the 40 plus points that you need from primary. Okay, you might end up at the end of the game with basically no one left. It doesn't matter. You've already scored like 15 points or you know, with the tertiary and all that every single turn for three turns. You do that for three turns, you're having a great time. 
Okay, so you just need to be going all in. You need to be going move, 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 move. You need to be taking objectives left, right, and center. It doesn't matter if you're taking casualties. You just need to be denying your opponent points whilst at the same time scoring yourself points. Move, move, moving a single infantry squad onto an objective might deny the enemy the, the points in his turn. But it doesn't mean you're going to be able to hold it in your turn. So instead of moving, moving or advancing like one or two infantry squads on an objective, you need to be thinking in bigger scales. You need to think, I need 30 conscripts and an infantry squad and a character on this objective. I need 50 men on each objective like every turn. And that sounds crazy because obviously you can't take that many men, but that's the scale you need to be thinking of. There's going to be times when you're going to, just, you're going to have such combat width that your opponent will be, yeah, they'll be like smashing you on two objectives, but you're holding three more. That's how it's going to work. Your opponent can't be everywhere at once. And you can just sit on, if you put pressure on every single objective, some objectives you'll be able to sit a platoon of guys on and they barely get harassed the whole game. Some objectives you'll be sending 50 dudes forward every single turn and you'll be ended up with like 10 or 20 of them left by the time your opponent's done with them. But then you send the next wave in and the next wave in and you're just constantly spamming those objectives with bodies. That's how you need to be thinking about it. So primary is very simple. Just keep advancing. You need to be thinking at the start of the game, I need to be able to direct 50 men to this objective, 50 men to this objective, 100 men to this objective, and 50 men to this objective. That's how I want to be doing it. And I'll have 50 to 100 men in reserve, which I can push into gaps and make sure that I'm taking advantage of the situations that develop on the battlefield. That's how you need to be thinking when you're talking about scoring maximum points, okay? Because again, you could lose every single one of those infantrymen. It doesn't matter if you end the game on 90 plus points. There's a very good chance your opponent isn't going to catch you up on that, okay? They're not going to catch you up. It doesn't matter. They might get 89 points. It doesn't matter. You've got 90 plus points. You only need to deny your opponent primary for a turn or two and you've got it in the bag. Think about it. So that's how you need to be approaching these games now. That's how you need to be approaching your primary scoring. Now let's talk secondary objectives. Now the really important thing when you're talking secondaries is you need to pick ones that your opponent cannot engage with. He cannot interact with. You are going to be scoring them no matter what he does. These are the objectives that you need to be thinking about. These are the ones that are going to make your opponent tear his hair out with frustration because no matter what he does, he can't stop you from scoring points. And at the end of the game, he might have killed 90% of your army. But as we've said already, we don't care because we've scored 90 plus points. That is the kind of secondaries you need to be thinking about. Now, the first one that should be going into your list, the best one for this, hands down, is boots on the ground. Boots on the ground is a fantastic objective if you are okay with just flooding the border bodies and taking casualties. All you need to do to score boots on the ground is have one infantry unit in each table quarter. For each table quarter you have an infantry unit in, you get a point. Now, can I hear... Move, move, move. I better bloody hear move and move. Think about this, okay? You can move and you don't, it's unlike engagement or fronts where you have to like over six inches of a table quarter. You don't need that boots to the ground. You just need to be wholly within a table quarter. You could be a millimeter over the line, but as long as you're wholly within a table quarter, you get it, all right? So the point is, is that you can get four victory points from this easily every single turn. By the end of the game, this, at the very least, you should be scoring three. Because you're going, to have the, you're going to have your two and you can move and move into one enemy table quarter each time. But at the very least, you should be getting three. But it's an easy four. Look, this objective should be maxed out every single game. The only way your opponent can deny you this is by just killing everyone. And to be honest, you're always going to have little scraps of infantry that you can run around and do this with. Okay. Now, bear in mind, you can't be within six inches of the center of the battlefield. Fine. Bear in mind that you can't do it with characters. Fine. Now, if you're finding yourself in a, strict, a sticky situation where you're like, oh, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to max out, there's a second part of this objective, which is I like to consider a bit of a backup option, but certainly not one that you want to forget about, okay? You can score one victory point if one or more units from your army is equipped with a regimental standard, is either wholly within six in the center of the battlefield or wholly within your opponent's deployment zone, okay? That's fantastic. You just, you know, regimental standard command squads are going to be so low on your opponent's priority list that you're going to be having a great time. Now, like I said, this is a backup option. Really, you should just be moving, moving an infantry squad into the opponent's half every single time, into each table quarter every single time. You're not going to care, okay? That's how you want to be doing it. This is an easy, easy double-figure objective, and I'd be surprised if you can't max this out every single game. So, boots on the ground is the first objective you want to be taking if you're willing to lose most of your army but win out on points in the end. 
Now the next secondary object that you want to take that your opponent can't really stop you from getting is inflexible command. Inflexible command is a fantastic objective. You can score it from turn one and there is basically no way your opponent can stop you from getting 15 points. Again, without tabling you, you're getting 15 points to this objective, right? So inflexible command is score two victory points if every Ashmetarm infantry unit from your army is in six inches of a friendly officer. Score one victory point if every Ashmetarm vehicle unit from your army is in 12 inches of a friendly vehicle officer unit. Okay, and then you can score one victory point if you destroy an enemy unit whilst one of your units is under the influence of an order, okay? Now that sounds kind of tricky. How am I going to keep all my guys in six inches? I'm taking infantry. Morning Glory, you're telling me about moving everyone. How am I meant to keep everyone in six inches? Well, there's an extra bit to this objective, right guys? For the purpose of the secondary objective, while an officer unit from your army is embarked within a transport model, that transport model is also considered to have the officer keyword. Forget about that, you don't care about that. What you do care about is, in addition, for the purpose of the secondary, while an infantry unit from your army is equipped with a voxcaster, hint, they get them all for free now. It's within 24 inches of a friendly officer unit, it counts as being within 6 inches instead if that officer unit is itself within 1 inch of a friendly command squad or Tempest command squad with a voxcaster. Guess what guys? Voxcasters and regimental standards on your fucking command squads are now free. Guess what? Everyone gets Voxcasters for free now. So 24 inches is fucking massive. Absolutely fucking massive. Okay, you want to take a command squad, you want to put an officer next to it, you put it, up by the la you put it behind a bit of landslide blocking terrain, just on the left flank, one on the right flank, one in the centre. You just bubble wrap that shit, you out of line of sight, it never moves out, it never sees the light of day, you don't care. I guarantee you just put it just... Just so that you can just move and move someone into the enemy table quarters every single turn. Because guess what? That's your boots to the ground point and that's your inflexible command point. 24 inches is a massive bubble. You do not need to be wholly within. You can have one dude, one dude stringing back to be within that 24 inch range. Absolutely fantastic. This objective is incredibly easy to get to score if you just build for it. Okay, And we've been talking about pure infantry. So just build for it. Now... One exception to this. So you should be able to get the two victory points for the infantry thing every single turn, right? You should also be able to score the victory point for the vehicle thing by taking a single tank commander. If you take a single tank commander, help me take three if you want. But if you take tank commanders, guess what? Tank commanders are a vehicle unit with the officer keyword. They're within 12 inches of themselves. That's just an easy victory point every single turn. Now, you could just literally take one tank commander, cheapest loader whatsoever, stick him at the back of the ball behind the biggest bit of landslide blocking terrain that you can find, and he just sits there, just playing on his phone the whole game, just getting you a point. That's it. That simple. Piece of piss. That's the way you want to be doing it, okay? Easy peasy. You could say you want to take some redundancy in case he gets, like, sniped out by something. I don't know what. No one else is taking indirect fire these days since GW nerfed indirect fire back into the Stone Age, apart from for guard. So, for me, this just seems like a really easy one, okay? Like, you just sit there with a tank commander, getting a point every single turn, and you take advantage of all the free vox casts, and you're just a little bit careful with your measurement, and you get your two points. Now, the best bit is you can also get an extra victory point, a little, little bonus victory point, if you kill something whilst you are under the influence of order. So to be totally clear about this, you need to kill an enemy unit, and the unit that kills the enemy unit has to be under the influence of an Imperial Guard order. If it does, you get an extra victory point, okay? Now, bear in mind, this is the Guard. Every single one of your units, every single turn, should be under the influence of orders. If you're not doing that, something has gone horribly wrong. Okay, so bear in mind when we're talking about not having as much firepower, maybe killing stuff isn't that big a deal. It doesn't really matter. You're not really aiming for this killing one under the influence of orders, right? You're aiming for the first two. You know, you're aiming for the two VP for the infantry near officers and box casters, one VP for the vehicle near officers and whatever. But this extra one at the end, you might pick up an extra point, you know, every other turn or here and there. Absolutely fantastic if you're able to do that. Just means it makes it easier for you to reach that max 15 points which is what you should be able to do easily with this objective if you build for it okay again they can't interact with this they can't interact with it you're getting two vp you're getting you're getting one vp for the vehicle side of things it's like boosting the ground you score it in your turn okay there's nothing they can do to stop that bar bear in mind a barring just just tabling you there's nothing they can do to stop that so that's why inflexible command is a fantastic second secondary objective now, the last one is a little trickier, guys, okay? And this is where I would say that the scoring isn't guaranteed and you need to play it cleverly depending on how you're going to get points for this objective, okay? So the first one that you want to be thinking about is special orders, 
Okay. Now, special orders is another unique guard objective, and essentially, you have to do an action on objectives that are either in no man's land or in your opponent's deployment zone. Okay. Now, if you complete the action, expunge intel. Now, bear in mind, you need to control the objective, and you need to be within 12 inches of an officer, which is a little risky, but you should have officers to spare. But if you can pull that off then you will score victory points. Now, if you are able to expunge one objective marker, bear in mind, it can't be your own. It has to be a no man's land or opponent one. If you're able to expunge one objective marker, you gain two points. Two objective markers, you gain five points. Three objective markers, you gain 10 points. Four plus objective markers, you gain 15 points. Now, realistically, whenever I've run this objective, I've got the 10 points very easily, but I haven't got the 15 points very easily, okay? And the one time that I think you could realistically get 15 points for this is if you were playing on an objective uh, on a mission that had four objectives in the middle of the board and had like six overall that's the time when i think you'd be able to pull off getting the big old 15 but still getting 10 points is fine if you can get if you can basically guarantee you're going to get 10 points of this objective every single time and that you can max out boots on the ground and that you can max out flexible command and that you can max out primary points that means that you can guarantee yourself every single game 95 victory points which is pretty bloody good and which is why i picked this one it's like it's still a good objective because your opponent's still going to struggle to interact with you doing it okay unless he sits on every single objective every single turn and is able to stop you from just moving on there with obsec and doing the action then he's not really able to stop you from doing this and so I think this is a really good objective. I think in nearly every single scenario, even a five objective scenario, you should be able to get 10 victory points with this every single time, which means if you're able to max out primary, if you're able to max out your other two secondaries, as we discussed, you should be able to do that. Then this one is looking like an easy 10. Then you're looking at 95 points guaranteed every single game. If you're playing on a six objective map where there are literally four objectives across the middle of the board and you just need to blow each one of those ones up and they're just like a couple of moves away, then you should be able to get 15 fairly easily. So I think that Special Orders is a good one. Now, I mentioned there was a second objective you could pick from, and I'm talking about retrieving Nephilim data. I would see ne retrieving Nephilim data as a good option, a good backup option, if you've built your list around it, aka maybe you've got some Scions, or you've got some other units that you're able to take advantage of. But bear in mind, if you're doing that, then you're not maybe getting Boots on the Ground turn one, or a Flexible Command turn one, so just take that into account. But I think retrieving Nephilim data is an all right backup one, because you can do it with deep strikers and you can get yourself some more command squads for things like boots on the ground and inflexible command. But I would just say, realistically, for me personally, I think special orders is the better one each time because special orders, each time you complete the action, you get more points than each time you complete retrieve Nephilim data. So for me, special orders seems like the better choice. It'll just depend on matchup. It'll just depend on mission. So those are the objectives that I would pick if I was going for a guard army that didn't care about casualties, didn't care about killing power, and was just going for pure points every single turn. And was just going to try and score as many points every single turn without my opponent really being able to stop me by tabling my army. But that's it for today's video. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed today's video, please consider giving it a like and a subscribe and a comment. To be honest, guys, any extra interactivity you can give this video gives it a massive boost. The all-knowing, mysterious YouTube algorithm loves, and I mean fucking loves, interactivity on a video. Even a simple like boosts it massively. So if you did like the video, please consider giving it, like I said, like, subscribe, comment, all that kind of good stuff. Now, if you've really enjoyed today's video and you want to go the extra mile for supporting the Morning Lord channel, then please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter. It is thanks to my channel members, it's thanks to my Patreon supporters that I'm able to do this gig full time now. I know, it's mind blowing. I still haven't quite I still haven't quite got over it, but it's thanks to the generous and fantastic support of my channel members, of my Patreon supporters, that I'm able to bring you even more tactics content over a variety of game systems. And I want to take a moment now to say a thank you to all of our latest channel members and Patreon supporters. So massive thank you to Nuki Brown, William Hale, Kevin B, Def Noise Marine, Ricky Brown, Homie Log. Matt 2001, Silver Prepper, and Furry Curry for becoming channel members. Thank you guys for doing your part. I also want to say a big thank you to our latest Patreon supporters as well. So big thank you to Jack Pascal, Stuart Francis, Harvey Hansen, Hans Anderson, Philip French, Garth Vader, and Andrew for signing up on the Patreon. Really appreciate all of your support, guys. It's absolutely 
fantastic. Now, last but certainly not least, I want to say a personal heartfelt thank you to every single one of my top tier Patreon supporters. These are the guys that have gone just above and beyond the Call of Duty and have signed up at the War Master level of Patreon support. Massive thank you to Navy Veteran, to Philip French, to Alex Stengal, to John Stubbs, to Nicholas Walsh, to Swordfish Trombone, to Diesel Fox, to Ross Miller, to Tom Sutton, and to August Varney. Guys, I know I always do this a little bit off the cuff and I try and do that to make sure you know that it's not scripted or pre-recorded or anything like that. I just want to say, like, massive thank you to all of the top tier support that you give. It's, it's incredible. It truly is. And I just want to say anyone that gets as far in the video and hears this part of the testimony and part of the thank you and all that kind of stuff, just put an 07 down in the comment section, guys, because Navy Veteran, Philip, all the rest, all of you, your support is just, it's life changing. And I don't use that phrase lightly. So massive thank you to everyone that's watched this video. Massive thank you to everyone that's gone the extra mile for supporting the channel. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.